This is DTV, and in today's episode, we are learning all about pet ownership responsibility as a military member living overseas. So my wife wants a dog, but I live in Germany and I literally have no idea how to own, register, or even feed a pet. I think twice a day, right? Anyway, I'll be interviewing a local military family to get their advice and hear their experiences, and I'll be visiting a local Hunde kindergarten, aka doggy daycare, to learn about local pet services as well. Disclaimer. You will not see any cats in this video. I will be going over pet ownership responsibilities in general, but dogs will be the star of this show. His name is Kaiser. Um, it was that or Kylo Ren. So, but since we got him in Germany, Kaiser was the obvious winner. Uh, he's a Presa Canario. Uh, he is a category two type dog. So uh, as far as I know, there's two categories. There's category one, category two. Category one is anything related to a pit bull, a Staffordshire Terrier. It'd actually be really interesting to have a list of everything that's category. There's four specific breeds that are category one and they are not allowed in Germany. Uh, category two, that's a long list. You'd be surprised how many dogs are on there. <laughs> That should be really interesting to have a list of everything that's category. Because there's things that you'd be like, that's a category two. Okay. Uh, but press canarios, anything in the mass, not anything in the massive family, but Connie Corsos, Rottweilers, uh, I want to say German Shepherds. German Shepherds aren't category two. Oh. Anything that are fighting, considered fighting dogs are category two. You should contact your local rot house because rot houses have different things on what is required, whether the temperament test is every year, every six months. Some require you to, re to register them with the rot house. Others, like I said, it's just different wherever you go. Okay, good to know. Dogs have to be at least nine months old for testing. Temperament approved dogs must wear a muzzle and be on a leash in public areas and breed restrictions apply to both service animals and emotional support animals. Um, so he needed all of his shots. We had to make sure that he had updated shots from like, back when he was, I don't know, a few months old, which I think he had all of that because he came with a passport. So that is one thing that's important if you're going to purchase a dog from a breeder, you have to make sure that they have the passport. Um, you have to have a health certificate um, 10 days before you fly, no more. It can be less than 10, but no more than 10 days, um, because once you get to the airport, they need to see the health certificate. A lot of people have to fly with Patriot Express, um, and that they only have, is it two slots? I think it's like two dogs per flight. And it's the same if you're gonna fly commercial. There's only a certain amount of slots for pets that are flying cargo. So you just have to make sure that you um, call the airline ahead of time and make sure that they have a slot. Um, a new one that's coming out in January is the Lufthansa will no longer ship snub-nosed animals. So boxers, um, I think mastiffs are in there. Um, any dog that is snub-nosed. If he has a chip, so that's also something that's required on base. And he has to be registered with TASA, which is, um, if he gets lost, it's the German website that they will scan his chip and his name and address will come up so that he can, they can contact us. So it's kind of like find my iPhone, but like find my dog. Yeah. In Germany, they put it on the left shoulder blade. Um, in America, it's right here. Like in between their shoulder blades. In between the shoulder blades on, in the mid, in the midline. We had to register him on post on Vilsec with the vet clinic. Um, and then you also have to let housing know that you have a pet. Going back to the breeder though, make sure that you have somebody German. If you're going to buy from a breeder, make sure that you have somebody German that can translate the contract for you, somebody that you trust. Um, mm -hmm. We had the breeder's girlfriend who spoke English translate it for us and she didn't disclose everything that was in the contract. So he actually had eye issues and the breeder told us that he would pay for it if he needed surgery. But then in the contract in German, it said anything we talked about in person does not 
matter if it's not in the contract. Um, okay, so if you're gonna walk your dog or if you're gonna have your dog anywhere in the public, you have to have uh, baggies. If they go number two, you have to pick them up. I was at a rest stop and I left the baggies in the trunk <laughs> and um, this German lady like came up to me immediately when she saw that I wasn't picking it up or I was walking away to my car. I was going to the car to get the baggies and she gave me a baggie to pick up his, his stuff. Um, if you're gonna travel, the vet clinic is a great place to get um, information on borders, boarding facilities, um, pet sitters, they have all of the list that. You definitely want to try to book in advance because a lot of the dog boarders that are local, they don't know when the four days coming up, but people who book them book it ahead of time. And so if you're looking for that trip and don't want to miss out on the opportunity for the trip, make sure you book like at least a month, even earlier than that, or just check with your boarder. Um, so that way you can go on that trip and your dogs are well taken care of. Rufus, come on, Okay, my name's Henry Wilson. Uh, this is the Wilson's Hoonie Kindergarten. What we do here is basically socialization for the dogs, doggy daycare. Our doggy daycare runs Monday through Friday from 7.30 in the morning to 1800 at night. We're the only certified ones in Graf. Mostly found word of mouth and of course Facebook. On Facebook, you look up the Wilson's Hoonie Kindergarten Graf and Veer. Most of our customers are, are the US military and spouses. You pay day by day or you pay more or on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis, depending on how many visits you do per month, uh, there's discounts involved. So we opened up our type of business uh, about six years ago in Eschenbach, uh, running out of a, a little house. Once I got out of the military and stuff, I of course had little jobs on posts and stuff that I worked at. Uh, we started uh, working at dog school and I got more involved in working, training dogs and stuff like that. And then eventually we found this place. Well, what they could do here, uh, the main offer, uh, of course, we have the indoor area where they can run and play on. There's couches behind us. There's a little bed set up behind us. And the doors are always open. So it allows them the opportunity to run outside and play if they wanted to be outside and play. We work with the dogs on a daily basis on behaving, uh, barking at a fence when a car goes by or when people are walking by. We help with that. We've got little rooms or we got kennels that they use. During feeding times and stuff that we have here, we separate each dog. Main purpose is food allergies and food aggression. You gotta remember, even with us, when we move to a new location, uh, it takes time for us to adapt. To adapt to the environment, to the new new cultures and everything else. Uh, what we see a lot here, uh, some dogs, once they get here, the rules have changed from what they had at the st in the States or wherever they're coming from to here because of the environment or, or because of the seasons and stuff. Um, you gotta let a dog at least adapt about three months. If you don't give them time to adapt, uh, they go crazy. They're not used to it. They start chewing on furniture or they start peeing in the house or uh, they'll just be destructive because uh, they're just, they're lost. They don't know what to do. The other thing I'm really concerned about is taking care of the pet at home. If there's both members of the family working, Leaving your pet outside all day is not an option here. It has to be supervised. So it has to either be basically locked inside the house all day while you're gone to work, or you have to have someone come to your house to let the dog out at all times, every two or three hours so they're not messing up the house or whatever. And this is what hurts a lot of people and, and make them give away their dogs is because the dog is locked up in the house all day long and gets bored frustrated uh, and it just starts destroying stuff or it starts barking all day long and disturbs the neighbors. Leaving a dog outside in a fenced in yard is not allowed either. There is a policy online. Most of the rules that we go by or that I tell everyone about, especially the one I just mentioned about leaving a dog outside all the time, that's in the Bavaria rules. That's for the military personnel. 